Hey guys, wanted to do another video. Um, so this came about because um, a few people have been contacting me, um, you know, watching videos, looking back, and so there's a few like out of country, especially that have issues getting supplies, which I never, I didn't really think about before. I guess I didn't really think, you know, about the potential audience. But um, what what I do for a lot of quail, uh, rail, um, you know, small birds that. I don't really have a, uh, you know, there's not really bodies for. There's nothing to really order. And there's a lot of specific things. Like, you may be able to buy a clapper rail, but what if you have a Virginia rail or a king rail or, a, you know, whatever. Or, you know, you may buy a bobwhite quail, but the bobwhite quail that we have in Texas is not the same as the big eastern bobwhites of which the body is formed from. So whenever I buy a body, I have to cut it in half, shave some of it down, and then modify it a lot just to be able to fit. And then it's like, well, what the hell's the point of buying an $8 quail body when you can just carve it? Um, the same thing with rails, same thing with gallinules, same thing with some of the grouse. Chachalacas, I do this. Because, you know, well, I take it back. Chachalacas, you can get a golden pheasant body, just FYI. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to try to do this, like, relatively, um, you know, not too long, hopefully. So normally with these, it's like I've just I've done so many that I uh, just kind of have it by memory. So this is for like a bob white, um, you know, ones we have here. So I'll take a longer blade exacto, and then I'm just going to cut this out. So for one, normally I'm doing a lot more. Like if I'm doing, say, like a batch for a mammal guy that needs some for jumping bob whites or whatever um and so i'll just you know i cut this just so the video could see it but normally i'll just have a big sheet i'll make my initial uh kind of template but and you can kind of see on here there's a little few stains so what i'll normally do say it's a bird i think i'm going to need uh you know i think i'm going to need to use this i'll um just lay them on here trace them and then you got your body. Then, of course, you just have to worry about width because a lot of these sheets, if you can find thicker sheets, definitely do that. This is only like the inch thick. But if you can find a little thicker, then you don't even have to do this next step. Because it's kind of a pain, to be honest, just because um, you have to glue them, but you can't, you can't really hot glue it too much because it just melts and then it won't connect. So you have to kind of just lightly do it when it's, you know, first heating up. But, uh... Or just kind of sprinkle it on so it kind of, you know, cools down pretty quick. But, so I'm just going to cut this, these two. Let's say I'm going to make a mess, but luckily I have my backboard down, so. And then I am going to get into some other videos. I do have some stuff coming up um, as far as, like, more uh, kind of specific techniques. I know we've talked about that before, and I said I was going to start doing that, and I am. I just, this one was... Uh, cool guy from uh, the UK contacted me and was talking about just issues with supplies and issues with whatever. So I was like, you know what, for quail especially, this is what I do. So so I have my two halves here. I'll take my, ugh, take my hot glue gun. Hopefully it's not, uh, it's still kind of soft here. So, and I, I just really just want enough to where I can, uh, you know, just to get them to stick enough. And then I'll kind of just hold that real tight for a little bit. I just want it to where I can carve on it and sand. And then I'm going to put tape around it later, so it's not really going to matter. You just want when you're carving, it's not slipping and sliding. So like if you say were to try Elmer's glue, you're going to run into the problem. I got my little sander here. I just cut a piece of wood for a little sanding bit. This thing has really come in handy because you have a nice flat surface. And I just slid that in there. I don't know. It was kind of cool. But, uh, and then I'll say, uh, I've been getting a lot of views and comments about the silicone head mold. Um, I may do another one. Just, um, some people are having problems with it. Some are like adding paints or adding things to it that I think are kind of retarding the drying process. Um, I think the biggest issue is if you do the mold, um, you know, like if you do the mold too thick, 
because what you really need is just like a because this is you know fairly thick i mean you can see it's but like this was an area here of this little pocket that hadn't dried yet and it kind of oozed out but it's no big deal because as long as you have that initial layer down with capturing the bill details it doesn't matter so as long as you can get like a just a little eighth of an inch layer put it in front of a fan let it dry you're good you know um, all right so let's get back to this so then and then real quick um, I don't use this I'm actually very much against using this except for um, I mean my tape measure except for a uh, quail because doing the jute process um, I don't know it's just it's honestly just easier um, normally about two inches for Bob White's is what I do for these so pretty easy same thing just measure the necks um, and then in a second I'll run the wire in there and do that but all right so from here I kind of know the width um, so what I'll do is just kind of start getting the shape so basically I'm just taking the edges off because obviously birds are smooth and uh, actually let me show this so I'm gonna just take the edges off and then I can start then I can start getting uh, some of the width down you know obviously you want the back end to be a little thinner and again this is just for you know if you if you have a bigger bird the only thing I could say is that you will run into problems with wire secure because when you have to use thicker wires like on say a a goose or a big duck um, this foam is not you know very dense so it, it when the wire goes in you're gonna have issues with it you know kind of rolling around in the foam and that's gonna cause you know some issues there but Kind of getting the width going. Um, so I, I put tape around it. Like I'll put electrical tape kind of for that reason. Um, just to uh, give it a little bit of security with the wire where it goes in and where it goes out. And then I can bend it back into the tape. Gives it a little bit of stability. But uh, it's just something to think about. So if you can find a denser foam, then you're good to go. And like I said, if you can find a thicker one that's maybe... You know, I don't know, maybe a couple inches thick or three inches. I've seen some blocks you can get quite thick. Those are great because then, you know, you still do the sanding and everything. But And there's people that use Excelsior um, where they wrap their own bodies. Um, you know, that's another thing. If you happen to have a bunch of Excelsior and wrap your bodies. But for me, it's like, I don't know. This has always worked just fine and... It's nice because I can uh, I can adjust it and modify it however I need to, and uh, you know if it's a smaller quail or say I was doing a mountain quail and I wanted it bigger, the rail is the same thing. If you get a bird and you uh, and you um, there's not really forms for it, no big deal. Just lay them on the foam, trace it out, and you're good to go. And like I said, I've, and this is what I've done for my, you know, not just for uh, ones jumping for bobcats or whatever, but just for normal quail, same for my personal collection. Um, I did start, you know, trying the forms. And after I started, uh, this is kind of like the silicone thing. It's like when I started some of the rails and some of the weird crap that I hunt, you know, rails, gallinol, snipe, woodcock. Um, let me look around. Uh, just, you know, just random different stuff. Doves are another one where a white tip on a collared is going to be too big for a morning dove body you buy. Uh, a morning dove body is generally really small, so like uh, white wings are even kind of big for them. So then it was just kind of a problem of it's like, well, if I have to modify. And so for the doves, reverse problem. I was having to cut it in the middle, add foam in the middle, glue it the three pieces back together to widen it. And I'm like... Well, why not just do this? I can buy a freaking big sheet, you know, that's like four foot by two foot for like two dollars. And I can make, you know, how many bodies can I make out of that? Maybe 20 or 30. So it just, you know, and I can get it the exact size that I need. So anyway, I got it pretty much sanded down. 
you know, again, with birds, it's not like mammals where you got to have everything to the quarter of an inch crap. Um, and then here pretty soon, we're, I, I really want to do, the next one I want to do is a real in-depth uh, uh, pinning a wing for a standing bird because, man, I get a lot of comments of people trying to, or I should say having problems with that specifically. And, uh, you know, a lot of my videos, I kind of have to generalize and I have to go over kind of stuff. And um, I'm going to do specific videos about very things. So some people are probably going to, um, I think most people will like it, though, because if you're having issues with something, um, it'd probably be obviously a lot more helpful to watch a specific video than it would be to uh, have to scroll through a 20-minute video. So, all right, so I got this guy, Bob White Quail. Great. Tail cut, just like a normal body. So, I'll clean it up in a minute. I'm not feeling like it. Um, let me get, uh, let me pause it. I'll get my wire, and then we'll wrap this puppy up. And also, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody. The subscribers have been going up. The uh, It's just been really cool. I mean, a lot of positive feedback. Um, I've had a lot of text from my friends that <laughs> don't even know about my videos. They'll run across them, recognize the voice or uh, whatever. I don't know. Maybe the logo or something. And they'll contact me. And it's been really cool. So that's what kind of keeps me doing it. Because, um, like I said, there's no financial gain to it. Um, there's no... You know, I don't advertise, so it's, you know what I mean? It's it's solely just for hopefully it helps somebody. Um, if it doesn't, man, that sucks because it's just a waste of time. But if it does, if it helps just one or two people, that's that's good enough for me. So, um, okay, so then what I'll do is, I guess, I'll wrap it up. So this kind of goes back. If I leave it just like this, and I'm saying this out of experience for obviously I've done it the other way, and you put wire in, and, you know, once you run it in there and you go to bend it, it starts to get wallowed out, and then it's wiggly. You have to glue. That melts more foam, and on and on and on. So that's where the tape comes in handy, because then um, the glue won't melt it as readily. And uh, you know what? I forgot to... Uh, so just like on the forms, I cut a little, a little circle here for the wings to go into. You see there. And then what I'm going to do, because you, you just want it to where the wing and the bone can kind of lay along the top. Um, especially on this, I, well, yeah, this is a standing mount. So I'll just kind of make a little incision, little incision, pop that out just to kind of give it a little runway sort of to lay in, um, which is, you know, which, which is there in an actual bird too. So just to kind of give some guidelines, especially when I'm pinning, I like to, um, since I don't use wires, I like to be able to feel where the joint is supposed to be. And then that way I can at least set it in there, pin it, and I know it's anatomically where it needs to be. So, um, so now I just kind of go, I kind of work the tape in the groove there. Go around, make sure you work the tape in the groove, and then I just kind of start angling around the body. So like I said, this is, it's, you know, it, what I'm learning, coming to find out is a lot of people are doing a, a lot of kind of at home, uh, you know, makeshift kind of stuff, which is, you know, I've been there, obviously. Um, you know, no flesh and machine no tumbler and <laughs> i gotta say man like you can do it but good luck man because it's just it people think birds are frustrating to mount try doing a bunch with scissors fleshing and uh no tumbler and spending an extra 30 minutes drying an extra hour fleshing i mean a lot of that stuff just ends up adding up to a fr really frustrating time but um if you're just doing a couple birds no big deal. This is 16 gauge, by the way. Um, generally, what I'll use, uh, actually, I'll do this first. Sorry, I haven't done this in a couple months, so, and I was trying to think the best way to show you guys. So, get the neck in there, put the wire in here, make sure it runs down through the tape, Ugh, like so, and then I'll just kind of bend a little U 
just that way it'll sink back in and then I'll kind of just pull get it to sink in there as much as I can so this is the other important part I think so then from here okay that fell I'll kind of get a little bit of glue from here you can uh, kind of put some water on it to cool it down if needed. I put a little bit, but you can see how quick it melts. So generally what I'll do is just kind of just get a little bit on there, not enough to, ah, should have done that. So always, the other thing, always make sure you're pulling and not pushing because of wire. So then from here, I'll just kind of get it going at the right angle. And then as I'm pulling the wire, I'm pushing the foam and I'm pulling this just to make sure that it's going to stay. And then I will wet my finger a little bit, get that. And then from here, obviously it needs to dry just a, a second. But from here, I will normally, uh, you know, quail kind of have, hold on. So the natural head is coming down, right? This wire, I leave the extra wire because that way when you put it into the body, you could normally attach this part to something and then you just have the quail. So when you go to sew it up or when you go to, uh, that way it's not laying down, you can actually put it in a vise or I'll stick this hole in, you know, little wood drill, wood, wood hole I have drilled out. And then that way it's kind of free floating. And then I can, you know, put the stuffing in, put the borax, sew them up, get everything nice. And then, uh, same kind of thing. I can let it dry with this wire out of the head. And then once I get everything exactly where I want it, then I can clip it. And that way you can't see it. And it's good to go. But this little extra thing, same thing with some of the mergansers or natural head. Having a little extra to work with helps a lot. So, um, normally I'll just kind of cut a little uh, angle to the dangle here and that kind of just so that way the head when it goes on because you're going to fill a lot of the, the front part with caulk and uh, you don't want it to set you want this to kind of come up on the back of the head a little bit just to help with that neck to uh, neck to head junction so it's just pretty much just a little bend you know with quail it's it's kind of like they're pretty straight you know because they kind of stand they kind of stand upright to a good degree. So like they're kind of walking like this, you know, duck would be more like, you know, horizontal diver would be like 45 and quail and a lot of grouse are normally like 55 or 60 degrees up. So I kind of get mine where it's like here, once the head's on there, this is like a, eh, it's not, it's not a relaxed, but it's not an alert. So if I wanted to do relaxed, I would cut a little bit more foam off so I could sink the head down. Because again, you're filling a lot of this in with, with caulk. Um, do I have the... Yeah, so what I did is, and I really suggest you do this too. Uh, I just got an old like syringe, veterinary syringe. Um, it used to have like a little curved nozzle on it, but over time it just kind of gets clogged up and you, you got to cut more of it off. So I just glue a straw on it. And then this way, if I, if, if, say if it rips or if I need to replace it, I can just take it off, glue another one on, and then that way I can go through the ear hole, the eye hole, the bill, and then I can inject it in there and kind of work my way out as I inject, and then you're good to go. And then you could fill it up with, you know, so on a quail, I would go in through the bill, get as deep as I can, start working it left and right, and then I'd work my way out. So I could close the bill up and then from there you can kind of start pushing and, and smoothing it over. And then that way you have uh, upland especially have a big tendency to uh, to dry and their neck region. If there's nothing filling it, it, it constricts a lot, whereas a lot of waterfowl doesn't dry necessarily like that. Upland will constrict. And so you'll end up looking like a, it'll look like a pencil neck or, you know, skinny. But if you have the caulk in there, obviously that'll help keep it fluffed out and, you know, good. So anyway, but this is good for, uh, like I said, this is for just a bob white that I'm going to be doing today. Um, other than that, that's uh, 
pretty much it. I mean, you can do it for all kinds of birds. Again, if you're going to do it for ducks or something, um, you should be okay. I mean, with the, with the electrical tape, if anything, maybe just make a couple thicker layers. And even on quail, I'll st when the wire comes through and I bend it over, just like the neck wire, I try to hot glue it. Um, because once the hot glue's in there, it's, it's going to stay. I mean, unless you're putting an extreme amount of force on it, it's going to stay in, in socket. If you don't have the tape on it, the hot glue will just rip out a big chunk um, when you start moving and working it. So as long as you have the tape on there, and I, I guess that would work on a duck, you know, maybe three times as much, and then that should be enough to uh, get all the wires good. So anyway, guys, that's it. Um, next will be... Probably a real in-depth standing or tucking the wing. Um, that's something I think really would make a big difference um, to a lot of mounts because if the wings don't look right, it just kind of throws everything out of whack. And I, 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 I thought I had done, you know, like a decent enough um, kind of description, but I think it, I guess it was maybe just a little bit too vague. Not vague, but um, I need something specifically for that. Um, because I think some people are having issues finding it or specifically what they're needing to, to look up. So anyway, guys, thanks again. Always please subscribe. Um, hopefully it helps. And as always, just contact me if you have any questions. I think I've answered every single person that's ever contacted me and tried to help as much as I could. And uh, other than that, that's all she wrote. See you, see you.